Truck abandonment has become a real problem in today's trucking industry. In this video, I want to talk about exactly what truck abandonment is and why it's a stupid move, a career move for you. This video is brought to you by GP Transco. They are a mid-sized carrier out of Illinois and are the third highest paying carrier in the nation currently. They hire out of all states and run in all states. So if you want to get paid well while being treated with respect, check them out at their website at gptransco.com or give them a call now. What truck abandonment is, is when a driver leaves a company truck somewhere other than a truck terminal. When he leaves it at the truck stop and walks away, when he leaves it in an industrial park and walks away, wherever he leaves it, where he's not supposed to leave it. And this can happen for a number of reasons. I understand it. The drivers lose their cool. They have an argument with the dispatcher or their pay has been shorted again for the third time or dispatches and bring them home and they're off route and they, they want to be home on this day and now they're running them another few weeks. Drivers lose their cool. It just happens sometimes. But sometimes drivers make the mistake of deciding they're going to quit and they're going to teach the company a lesson by abandoning this expensive piece of equipment hundreds of miles from the terminal. Well, I got news for you. You're not going to teach the company a lesson. They're going to teach you a lesson and you're going to be the one that's going to pay and heavily. The golden rule for truck abandonment is just don't do it ever. The company has a real attachment to hundreds of thousands of dollars out there in a truck, trailer, and load. And as much as you think you might be teaching them a lesson, you don't know. It's a bad idea for a driver to do that because you don't know how the company is going to react. At the very least, they're going to go to your DAC report and, and phrase you as unhirable or would not rehire or something like that. And the next carrier that looks at that, any carrier that looks at that is going to just not even consider you for a driving position because everybody in the industry understands what that means. It means you've done something that they just cannot forgive. And if you've abandoned the truck and the truck gets vandalized before the company gets to it, and that happens all the time or the load gets stolen or something like that, the company may well look at you and decide to have you charged with vandalism and theft. And you need that like you need a hole in the head. And that will make you an unemployed truck driver with a criminal record. Most carriers have a clause in the contract that you've signed with them that you will return their equipment in good order at, at your termination date. You should know your contract. You should know that that's in there. But think about it from their point of view. Would you want someone to abandon your car hundreds of miles away from home and it's only worth twenty or thirty thousand dollars. Here you're abandoning a piece of equipment with a load on it that may be worth a half a million dollars all told. How smart is that? You think the company's going to take that lightly? You bet they're not. Now having said all that, I realize it's easier said than done and sometimes drivers are just going to snap because they're dealing with fool dispatchers or something unreasonable. So you get into this situation, how do you handle it? Well, the first thing you do is you don't handle it over the phone. You save it until you get back to the terminal. And I know that's going to be tough, but you have to step back. You can't let a knee jerk reaction ruin your career. So you've got to step back, cool down, complete the trip, and then when you get back to the terminal, then talk at it with the dispatcher. And remember, the dispatcher is the bottom rung, but that's usually where the heat comes from. If you're having trouble with the dispatcher and you just can't get through to him, go above his head. Always do that because he doesn't care either way. He doesn't own the equipment. He doesn't have a dime invested. Talk to somebody upstairs with an investment in the equipment. They'll be more likely to see your side of the argument. Now, one scenario that happens fairly often is a driver gives his notice and then he agrees to go out on another trip. After he's given his notice, he says, I want to be home at the end of the month because I'm going to be done then. He gets out on the road and the dispatch won't bring him home. And that's a lot of times how abandonment happens. Now to get around this, to avoid this happening in the first place, when you've decided you're going to resign, establish the, the date of your resignation with your dispatcher and with the managers above him. And that way there's no argument if they decide that they're going to try to jerk you around once you get out on the road. Now, all sorts of carriers, if you hand in your resignation, they'll say, well, 
you're done today, we don't need you anymore. And that happens a lot, that's okay. But be prepared financially, have money in the bank in case this happens so you weren't relying on the next two weeks worth of revenue. But if they get you out on the road and they don't want to bring you home, don't abandon the truck. Get on the phone, talk to the manager, tell them your situation, remind them of your end date, and be polite, but be clear. You said the truck's gonna be home at the end of the month. Loaded or empty, you're returning their equipment to their terminal at the end of the month when you said you would. So it's up to them how they wanna handle it, whether they wanna put a load on it or not, but either way, you'll be there with the equipment in good shape at the end of the month. Something else you want to allow for is, if you're turning the truck in, give yourself a day to make sure you're turning that truck in good condition and it's clean when you drop it off to them. And when they see it and it's clean and it's presentable, have them sign off on a form. Make it up yourself or have the company provide you with one, releasing you from responsibility for that piece of equipment, that you've returned it in good shape and they've agreed and they've signed to that. Now, if you've been with this carrier for a while, you probably have some idea of how they, they react to a resignation. And with a lot of carriers, you'll know that they're gonna jerk their drivers around. It might be better in the first place just not to take that last little trip out, just in case they try to do it to you. It might be the smart move. A couple of ideas here. A, it might not be a good idea to have a whole lot of your stuff in the truck so it's easier to clean out and you can do it more quickly if you need to. And the second thing is, hopefully you've been smart enough to find a job where their terminal is close to your home so you're not having to greyhound all this stuff from hundreds of miles out. And that's another advantage to not abandoning the truck. To bring it home and you're close to home at their terminal and you can just pile it all in your car and go home. Now, if you're the kind of driver that has a short fuse and you know that this is something that you might potentially do, you might want to take the time to think out how you should react rather than how you might react and have a game plan. Abandoning the truck is the move of a fool. It's not something a professional driver would do and you don't want to make that mistake. It will kill your career. At the end of the day, don't lose your cool. Don't abandon the truck. Get it back to the terminal, and if you can't sort it out, move on with your life. So that's a bit of a serious topic. Let's lighten up the mood. A lot of truck drivers, and I'll tell you a story here, a lot of truck drivers in the course of their career have to go through customs. It's just part of their job, and I used to have to do it all the time. And it can be an annoying experience sometimes. Sometimes it goes really smoothly, and sometimes every once in a while you see something really interesting. I was coming down the Ambassador Bridge one day and I was headed into the States, out of Canada, and I was about four or five trucks from the booth, from where the, the uh, initial booth is, the inspection booth, where they check your ID and stuff like that. And I was still on the rise of the bridge, so I could see well down below me. There were about four trucks ahead of me. There's a guy at the booth, and usually the trucks are pretty quick going through. The, the initial inspector will talk to them, look at their ID, see where they're going, and, and head them into the compound, point them into the compound. But this, this truck was taking a few minutes, and I thought, oh, I wonder what's going on, because it's holding up the line. It's taking a little while. And I, I'm watching and the inspector gets out of the booth, comes out around and goes to the back of the trailer. And this isn't usual, but sometimes it happens. The inspector opens up the back of the trailer, the door, and all of a sudden there's guys just pouring out of the trailer. And they're running all over the bridge and some are running to the States, some are running back up the bridge into Canada, some are looking over the side of the bridge thinking about jumping into the river or the parking lot or something. And we're 100 feet in the air still at this point. There's guys running all over the bridge. And this poor customs guy is just, it's taken him completely by surprise, I guess. He must have heard something in the trailer or sense motion he wanted to have a look or something was off anyway. But I'm sure he wasn't expecting 20 or 30 guys jumping out of the back of the trailer. And he's on his mic and he's calling for help and the, the help is coming out of the old, other booths. But there's only like three or four customs officers up there and there's about 25 or 30 guys running all over the bridge. It just looked like a pack of ants scattering everywhere in every direction. And it was 
it was comical to watch. And, you know, I, I know there's it's a serious deal to be caught smuggling. That, that truck driver probably ended up in jail for 20 years. But, man, at the time, it sure was funny to watch all these guys hopping out of the truck one after another and trying to decide which direction to run. But they were all running somewhere, and they were all running different directions. It was hilarious to watch. That's it for today. Stay safe. Don't abandon the truck. Be professional and return it to the terminal. Keep the rubber side down. I'll see you on the backhaul.